I know what it is to be a lonely artist in a garret and you just have to kind of bring your own energy to something and keep it going. And in many ways, activists are exactly like artists. They kind of have to initiate and keep the power going. So in many ways, uh, you know, when, when I come on with you, which I have on every single one, in many ways, it's very much how I was with my father. I, I supported him hugely, even from when I was a little kid. And I know that other artists are watching this and other activists. And I say, you'll know what this feels like when you're not sure about what you've done. You're not even sure if it's going to go anywhere or be uh, completely absurd. In fact, my father's favorite quote was from Napoleon, where he said that's a thin line between the sublime and the ridiculous. So there's a sort of a quality of feeling ridiculous, you know, and um, and yet there's also the truth of the sublimeness of people who are willing to just take on these huge issues, whether they be artists or activists. And I remember when we were talking and um, it was all this ridiculous fiddling that YouTube was doing and whoever was like diminishing all the numbers of viewers and things like that. Um, I, I think that never is there a reason to feel dis disheartened because every one of us is capable of starting something enormous. My father was just a kid from the Bronx. He had nothing. He failed at school. He was rubbish at it. You know, he just happened to love photography. You know, when he went to Look Magazine um, to get a job, they said, oh, you're rubbish at photography, piss off. Or, you know, a New York version of that conversation. And then my dad, who was, like I say, he had that energy as all activists and artists do to just keep, keep at it, to persist in it. So he went to the receptionist and he chatted her up and he said, could you get my photographs to the main editor? Not the, you know, whatever little, little Napoleon was at the uh, editor's desk looking at photographs. And they gave him a job immediately and he had this exalted career as a teenager you know, photographing the likes of Leonard Bernstein and um, movie stars and whatever. And then he decided he wanted to make films. So he threw off a job that everyone thought he was insane to do that, as I'm sure people think Julian Assange was insane to take on, well, let's face it, those elite on this planet that are destroying humanity. And that's a pretty big project. That is a pretty goddamn big project. And yet Julian, who was, you know, no more equipped than any other, you know, than anyone else. Um, it makes me think of Lord of the Rings where uh, Frodo sort of says, well, you know, I'm really not the person that you need to like, you know, take on this very important work. And then Gandalf says to him, yes, but you've been chosen. So in many ways, we've all been chosen. If you raise your level of consciousness up to the point where you know that you must do something, in effect, you are chosen. And like Christ said, you know, forgive them for they know not what they do. The majority of the people that just don't know what's going on and they haven't got enough race consciousness to, to take this choice, it's a choice to do something monumental, even though none of us are really equipped to handle it, yet somehow, you know, like you, Susie, somehow you've done this incredible thing. And I know you've had help and everything, but you spearheaded this. And just like my father couldn't make a film if other people didn't help him, the fact is it was his force of, of nature to make the choice to take on this huge challenge. So I just encourage everyone, if you feel ridiculous standing all alone on the street with your banner saying, you know, free Julian Assange, you know, understand that that is what every artist and activist has to face at a first level, is this fine line between the sublime and the ridiculous. But know that the choice that you're making is sublime 
And anything that you do is like exponentially geo, you know, geometrically explosively important. You know, my father was just a little kid from the Bronx and he ended up making some of the most iconic movies in film history. And I can tell you, he was just a normal guy. He was a normal guy. Everybody uh, uh, thinks that people who do something incredible must be in themselves incredible people. What's incredible is the choice they made, the choice to make a difference.